Hello and welcome to Desi Sportscast. And as you can see, we've got uh, Coach Floyd Pinto with us. A real pleasure inviting uh, Coach Floyd uh, to the show. How are you, Coach? I'm good. I'm good, Bharat. Uh, uh, Navin, it's good to finally see you guys on on, on a video call. Uh, so looking forward to this. Uh, a lot of good topics to talk about. And, uh, you know, uh, Corona has got us uh, on Zoom calls now. So that's the best way to keep in touch. So looking forward. To yeah, with very limited social interaction and um, uh, voicemail calls are not the best, but uh, video calls, I think, are the next, next best thing. Um, yeah. So thank you, firstly, for joining us on this show. I really appreciate you taking time out. I think the obvious question will be, and it's one that's been asked uh, by everybody to you probably in all interviews, how have you been coping with the lockdown and uh, what, which part of the country have you been locked down in? Uh, I'm, I'm back home in Mumbai, so, so, so that's good because uh, uh, during the season with the Arrows, I got back to Mumbai and started uh, uh, went on a few scouting trips with the AFF. So I was based in Mumbai, thankfully. So uh, like, I, I think I'm like everybody else during the lockdown. You know, at, at the start, uh, uh, I was really happy. Okay, now I have some time to myself, a lot of free time to do a lot of things that I wanted to. But as the lockdown progressed, you kind of, you know, um, now I have that itch to get back on the training field get back coaching you know because uh, initially there were a lot of webinars happening uh, you know so interacting with a lot of people uh, talking about various topics my experiences with the arrows with the ASF. Uh so that was initially very interesting but you know now I'm kind of growing tired of only talking now it's time to you know get back on on the field and you know you, you no matter how much you you try to plan uh, no matter how much you try to prepare yourself, it's never the same. You know, if you're not if you're not coaching day in day out, so mm -hmm. there's only a limited period of time I can spend uh, thinking about uh, football. Uh, after that, my mind gets uh, distracted or exhausted you know, because I'm not uh, putting that into practice on the field. But besides that, uh, it's good to be home, uh, spending a lot of time with my mom here at home, a lot of work at home being taken care of. Uh, thankfully, the lockdown has been eased a little bit in Mumbai. Right. So uh, I've been uh, getting out a little bit, uh, going back on my runs to the local park. So that has been kind of a breath of fresh air during the lockdown. So that's about it, you know. <laughs> Can't yeah. wait to get back to work. Absolutely. I mean, we're at a different stage here in England. Obviously, the uh, EPL started on uh, Wednesday. And uh, the coaching started a couple of weeks before, even at the grassroots level, they're allowing coaching to uh, take place now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it's not allowed in India at the moment, any coaching or uh, activity in the sports arena at all? No, nothing. I, uh, I, I feel with this situation, we are way behind Europe because you know, the situation escalated first in Europe and then uh, towards India. So I think uh, we are about three to four months behind Europe in whatever is happening, whether it be sport or in, the, on, in other activities, whether it be work as well. So I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, by the end of this month or maybe next month, uh, we should get some news about uh, a couple of teams, especially the maybe the Under-17 World Cup team and uh, the India Under-16 team that is going to participate in the AFC final round. They are, I think, the priority for us. So as soon as we get news about these two teams uh, getting back into their training camps, that would be a good sign for us to assume that football is going to get back to uh, where it was. Yeah, and at this uh, lockdown you mentioned, um, it's given time for people to uh, go back to some of their other passions and catch up with reading or improve their cooking. Um, what's it allowed you to do that you've not been able to do? Because as a coach, you're pretty much 24-7 uh, thinking about the games or preparing for games or coaching. Yeah, I, I've, I've tried to do as many things as possible that is not related to football. You know, I've uh, tried to... Uh, get myself on a on a diet uh, basically so uh, getting my mom uh, to cook a certain things at certain times which you know uh, getting getting her to do that is a is a challenge in itself 
so that <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty good uh getting myself organized basically you know it's been 5 years with the aiff so i haven't been home that much mm-hmm. so a lot of things to take care of a lot of household stuff to take care of in mumbai so so i've been i've been trying to keep myself busy that's been the biggest challenge you know trying to keep your mind busy doing something or the other uh initially when before the lockdown started you know uh the the place where i stay we were very involved in playing volleyball every day so that was uh, an activity which i liked you know interacting with people getting their energy out sweating out a bit you know so that stopped so i'm thankful that now i can go back to the park now do my workouts get on a run just keep myself active so that you know when when i get back on the pitch i'm not that rusty and like you said you know the premier league's back nothing better than nothing better than watching some good live football you know so that i i just sat up last night for us here it's late night so so mm. i sat right through the night watching tottenham versus uh, manchester united you know so that's kind of a routine now it revolves around live matches in the premier league yeah. well when we were talking about scheduling this uh, interview you were kind enough to take note of when the biggest game of the weekend was happening is at 12:30 <laughs> so you were kind enough to agree to do this uh, Zoom call before the big games. So I really appreciate that, and um, I'm glad uh, you've got um, uh, affections for uh, Leicester as well, because I know wh- which is your main team, and we'll come to them in the in yeah, the call. Not, not many, not many, fa- not many friends I have followed Leicester, so it's easy to remember the ones who do. <laughs> so, I I don't want to you know deprive you of some live action. <laughs> Well, we're we're a growing family. Even back in India, um, as Nevin will testify, I'm always uh, trying to share the love for uh, Leicester City. And he's been kind enough to um, promote the club by wearing a shirt that he's got from Leicester. So um, it, it, the, the arm is slowly growing. And um, yeah. if you were to now and again wear a Leicester shirt, I'm sure that will help as well. So <laughs> we'll see if we can make that happen. <laughs> um i don't know if you want to come in here nevin I, i mean what i wanted to start really was uh, you, you mentioned you had five years at the Fed, with the federation and um you played a big part in developing young players um how do you look back in time in terms of uh, what you achieved and what you did with the under 20 and with the arrows you know i think uh, uh, the asf academy themselves we're going through a, we're going through a transition from my first year to the last year you know in fact uh, in in the first year uh, we had a good group of players like i have always mentioned my first batch with the aff was the batch in which uh, anirudh thapa jerry ralden jwala that group you know who had already been in the aff for close to four years i think before that uh, three to four years before that so uh, at this point of time i i see a big change in the way clubs are getting involved in youth development so uh, initially we we as uh, national team coaches uh want uh that interactive with the with the clubs uh you know we were always uh, uh inviting players to come on trials uh but totally relying on the scouts that were sending in players but as time went on uh, there is now a very good interaction between the clubs the, especially the coaches at the clubs and the youth academy and the national team coaches so i think that that gap in communication has improved over time which has in fact uh, helped us uh, to uh, nurture not only not only uh, scout but also nurture good talent because when uh, coaches at clubs and the national youth team coaches are in touch with each other we both feel each other's pulse get to know what's required at the national team level we ourselves get to know what's happening at at club level club youth academy level so that kind of interaction uh, which wasn't that prominent in my earlier days in the aff you know that that's improved a lot coach education has improved a lot so you know there's a lot of new young coaches coming up and uh, wanting to do no, more things wanting to learn a lot so uh, we've ha- we've had a couple of coaches come down and watch our training sessions uh, 
trying to find out what is required to make it at the national youth team level which is good in fact which, which we've been always encouraging coaches to come down scouts to come down and watch us and interact with us so there's a good transition there's a good development happening with the with the AIFF academy and uh, you know for me uh, the defining point was when the indian arrows uh, were uh, were resurrected so to say mm. the project was rejuvenated because uh, i was looking i was looking for something you know in the professional league I, i wanted to make that step up into the into the professional league and the indian arrows gave me that opportunity so two years in the i league one as an assistant coach and one as the head coach i think were the main uh, uh, the most uh, promising seasons that i've had in the aif because we were no longer although everybody says we were a development team i, I know nobody in the i league treated us as a development and we realized that in the first year so you know those two years in the i league working with the indian arrows i think uh, and now from now onwards hopefully the indian arrows stay in that is going to be a good challenge for any of the coaches working with that particular group of players yeah, yeah. floyd if i may just uh, jump in Uh, we have a lot of conversations on the arrows itself but not perhaps a lot of conversation on how the scouting is done so can you sort of highlight and tell us how the scouting process is done are there actual visible scouts across india or is it through some statistics and database how does this work can you just highlight how this is done uh, you know there are a lot of aspects in which uh, scouting is done uh, first initially uh, basically vikram uh there's a guy called vikram nanivadikar who heads the scouting department uh mm-hmm. he coordinates with all the state fas uh with various tournaments that are happening uh around uh, around india i'll give you an example like when i when i left the arrows camp there was a particular scouting trip so i i was asked to go to uh, punjab for the all india university uh tournament which involved the top 8 university teams which was the finals out there to scout for players who could potentially maybe play in the arrows or in the under 23 for the for the afc under 23 so okay. uh, then uh, we had uh, the state uh, like for example jammu kashmir was willing to have uh, a scouting uh, trial for future aiff teams be it under 13 or be it under 15 you know mm-hmm. so i went there to scout for players as well so as far as uh scouting uh, apart from clubs are concerned it's based on the willingness of the state association and the coordination between them and the aif but okay. what has improved of late is that a lot of uh, clubs are now aware are being made aware or are aware of the requirements of the national youth teams so uh, for my previous under 19 team uh, me mahesh the goalkeeping coach uh, we watch each and every game from the under 18 final round in goa you know mm-hmm. so as to yeah. personally pick the players that we wanted because we didn't want to rely on if you ask a scout to to come in and give us players maybe he'll give us 50 players but usually we know we don't end up selecting too many from there so we decided mm-hmm. that since it is in goa we, we will personally ourselves go and pick the players so there's a better chance for the player to make it so yeah. apart from that apart from that we had also requested the clubs you know uh, we spoke to the head coaches we made it a point to speak to each and every head coach and it was very mm-hmm. fruitful because there were coaches who gave us input on players who probably uh, we may have missed out on or who probably they recommended because they are working with them on a day to day basis while we are watching them just for 90 minutes uh, mm-hmm. there are players who may have been injured during that point of time or uh, not at that particular tournament so that kind of interaction that's happening now between the coaches and the national youth teams is what has changed the way scouting uh, happens in in the country and better players uh, are getting access to the national youth team coaches so so that is what have, we we have been aiming for you know that kind mm-hmm. of interaction yeah and if i may just ask uh, we've got a new national team coach we've got a new technical director has there been anything sort of concrete decided on a on a certain structure that you're looking for a certain kind of player that you're looking for as a scout or when you're working with say under 15 under 13 under 18 the kind of football they played really doesn't matter you just look for quality like you know overall 
is there any sort of a mandate for you to you know uh, look at players from from what i have interacted with uh, igor at the uh, during the camps that we were during the camp that we attended especially the match before bangladesh the the, the time before the bangladesh match it's clear that you know he's looking for players that are first technically good you know they need to be mm-hmm. technically sound they need to be able to, they need to be comfortable on the ball and more importantly you need to be uh, a person or player who's ready to work hard for the team yeah and above all make good decisions on the pitch so we are moving into that point of time not only in indian football as well as world football where you know you require players to be versatile you require Absolutely. players to be versatile you require players to maybe play in one or two positions different positions and you require players you know who can adapt to different situations different styles of play whether it be your own team or whether it be the opposition so you know uh, it's clear that uh, at the senior national team level uh, there's just there's a gradual change in the style of play what we what we seen earlier i think everybody is aware of that it's just a matter of you know playing those uh, uh those matches those competitive matches against top opposition where we can solidify mm-hmm. the way we want to play but at at the youth team level i can only speak for the youth team level we've always looked for players who are uh, technically good you know or who have the ability uh, uh to be comfortable on the ball because a lot of things that we want to do rely on what we want to do with the ball even if uh, irrespective of the style of play and uh, we've observed uh, you know not many clubs or academies are working at the really low levels you know at the grassroots mm-hmm. or uh, you know 10 11 12 13 year old level the age age group level so we've also observed that the players that come in to the under 16 team for example with dibiano the more amount of time mm-hmm. they spend in the aff youth academy uh the better their chances are of progressing through the structure into professional football and eventually into the into the national team and uh, mm-hmm. that gap between uh, uh club youth football and aff academy youth football is getting closer because uh, now a lot of clubs are starting to scout for players at a younger age uh, they are starting to train uh develop and educate the players and give them even more exposure at the younger age with now mm-hmm. the youth level competitions is starting at the under 13 level so that's helping develop more technically better players and uh, mm-hmm. that's the basis of uh, what we are looking for at the aff youth level and i'm sure you got if you see the the, the the selection of the players at the national team level as well are those players who are technically good on the ball and who make good decisions on the pitch absolutely Bharat, you want to come in? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Uh, just on the back to a couple of things you mentioned that the clubs are now starting to develop their own young players and um, starting from a younger age. Uh, do you still think there is a place for the Arrows team, or do you think uh, we are now getting to a stage where the clubs can um, develop the players? Because there was a time when the Arrows came in, like you said, there was a definite need. Uh, there was no structure in place for them to uh, get regular game time and progress. Uh, do you still think there is a place for the Arrows? There is a base for the Arrows because you know that gap between uh, progressing from the under 18s to the first team is is huge. You know, it's huge in international football, but it's even more huge in uh, Indian football. because it's it's very competitive at uh, the ISL and the I league level uh, we have uh, you know with the arrows we don't intend to compete with any club there's no intention of competing for a player with any club as long as the player is getting game time at his respective club we are happy we are happy for that you know uh, we've been more than happy to release the player to their respective parent club if that player is playing in the same competition or higher what the aim of the arrows is to make sure that these boys get game time you know uh, uh, with the world cup team uh, uh, the under 17 world cup team uh, they spent two seasons with the indian arrows you know majority of them a lot of players left after after the first season but the majority of them who spent two seasons with the indian arrows 
uh, were in a much better position to now fight for a place in the squad or in the first team. And there are a lot of players who are now not just bench warmers, they are also playing in their respective first teams. You know, you have uh, you have Jackson, you have Amarjeet, you know, you have Rahul KP. Uh, all these players, you know, who have broken into their respective first teams, which is an encouraging sign. Mm. And uh, you know, no matter how much you train, no matter uh, even if you train with professionals and improve, uh, the one defining factor is game time. You know? mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we encourage the players to make good decisions, so, and we 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 do not want to influence them. too much you know if if a player is happy and if a player wants to play for the indian arrows uh, we are more than happy to have him over and give him as much time to develop as possible yeah, yeah i was uh, i mean the frustrating part for you until you manage the arrows must have been the length of time you had to develop the players because as a national team coach with the young boys you yeah. probably have them for camps uh, extended yeah. camps maybe but that must have been really frustrating to you and something that you appreciated when you had the arrows and you had them full time uh that must have made a big difference completely because uh, you know I, uh, the arrows patch uh, uh i had a season and a half as an assistant coach with them so i had a good understanding of what they were and uh, you know how they reacted to different kind of situations what what they wanted to achieve as individuals and as a group uh, during uh, the 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 AFC under 19 phase and the first season in the I league so uh, you know even that one season that we had with the indian arrows was not enough uh, to 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 get in all the aspects of the development that we wanted to inculcate into these players because uh, you know the lure of professional football is is very very enticing at this point of time and uh, a lot of clubs were chasing these players for a lot of lot a long time so uh, but we were happy to see that you know post that season second season in the in in, in the i league uh, a lot of players are now getting ample of game time in the isl or in the i league uh, of course there are a few players who are not uh, featuring regularly or having no game time uh whatsoever but again you know at least we at least they have benefited by training with professionals training under uh you know maybe foreign coaches or in a good environment and hopefully uh they take a good decision maybe in the second season uh depending on what are the chances of them getting game time at their respective club or maybe they have to go out on loan somewhere else and find game time because uh but one season is not enough you know to develop uh, the players but it was nice to have a uh, a fixed set of players for an entire season uh, in the i league uh, to develop mm-hmm. them and to produce results because after that first season uh, there was only one aim and the aim was to find a way to win and uh, to find a way to not finish at the bottom of the table because it it wasn't it wasn't uh, uh, a good feeling at all so achieving that you know it wasn't a cause for celebration but it was it was a cause for satisfaction we were very happy with what we had achieved mm-hmm. and uh, the development that we had inculcated into these players so that they could go now into the professional circuit and express themselves and i never did know i wanted to speak about some of the players that you coached and developed uh, but before i um, hand over to nevin to talk about that um do you think this too much pressure on age group national team coaches to bring in results um you know because you, the time you have to develop those players the time you spend with them um we're going to the uh, under 16 asian championships we're in a very tough group um do you think uh, the powers that be or the larger population appreciates that you know it's not all about the results obviously we want to win and uh, go up the rankings but it's more than that and there's just too much pressure on re- uh, results at that age group yeah, uh, definitely there's a lot of pressure i think with uh, you know that i say there's a there's a big difference in the role of a head coach and an assistant coach in the team and uh, if uh, there's the most amount of pressure that you face is with the head coach and it 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 as as a head coach you have to be able to deal with that 
you know you have to be able to deal with that pressure uh, uh in uh, when we played uh, in the with the arrows in the i league uh, a lot of uh, my work had to do with man management less you know there, obviously there was a coaching aspect to it but these boys were superstars you know these boys were had seen everything they have, they have traveled all over the world they had played in a world cup you know so just to manage them was a, a big task so the pressure of managing these players the pressure of producing results is i think a given for every head coach be it as a national youth team level or be it at any club level and if you want to sustain in this uh, unforgiving environment you have to be able to deal with that pressure and produce results and uh, no matter what you do or how you do it at the end of the day uh, you know they say the table doesn't lie and you know as long as you're getting the results you uh, you're in the you're in the right side of things and uh, you have to deal with that pressure do you yeah, think that's uh, you know, sorry yeah. sorry no i i felt that you know the good thing about the aff is that you get time to grow okay. uh, in the environment so right from my first year in the aff to the, to my fifth year there was a gradual process in which i grew and i learned about uh, you know what is expected at the aff with the youth teams with the national youth teams and uh, you kind of uh, grow as a coach you kind of adapt to the expectations that are around you the situations around you like you said you know you don't you don't have too much time to work with players you know because we work on a two year cycle uh, with the afc tournament uh, at times you don't have uh, you know more than maybe a year to work with a group of players and you know recently with the clubs getting involved uh, a lot of clubs also are reluctant to release the players to the national youth teams mm-hmm. so at times you you may not get that youth that player that you want until really close before mm-hmm. before the tournament so now that's going to be a new challenge for the coaches that are coming so we have to deal with it because uh, as long as the player federation and the coaches working are in sync which i think uh, there's a good there's a good structure at the aff now uh, it shouldn't be a problem for any coach to adapt to the expectation that is given to i'm 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 quite uh, happy that you're telling me this because generally as an audience as a journalist our perception is that indian arrows has it very easy there's no pressure there's no pressure to win there is just you know just need to play them and hopefully an isl team will come pick them up pay good money so it's very fascinating for me for you, i mean to listen to you talk about the pressure and the players themselves feeling the pressure that the fact they have to achieve something at a very young age uh, do you did you at any point think the fact that there is no relegation affected their growth in some way because imagine being at a shillong lajong the player has to also fight an actual relegation as opposed to an indian arrows where you're comfortable you know the indian the air is going to protect you give you the money and all that do you think that really affected the player growth in any way uh, you know it it depends on the mindset it depends on your mindset as a player as a coach you know and uh, you know that first season in the i league uh, Uh, when when these boys had played the world cup they had played the afc under 19s against top opposition maybe uh, we didn't expect the i league to be as competitive as what we thought it was you know we were in a maybe these boys were in a fairy tale world where they where they said okay the i league let's see what it is and you know uh, you know the isl at that point of time was being talked about a lot so you, they may not have taken it as seriously as uh, expected but once you finish at the bottom of the table irrespective whether you have, whether you have relegation or not you know it hurts you you know and these boys were so you know uh, the level that they had set for themselves was so high that you know they they didn't take that too nicely you know sit they didn't take that sitting down and that is what i liked about these guys you know it was very clear in that uh, right through the season that you know losing isn't good and it's not about just losing uh, these boys wanted first not to finish at the bottom of the table so that you know we could proudly say that yes you know we we fought against uh, you know teams that were obviously having an advantage against us because they are professional players 
add to it for foreigners so we have already uh, you know down as far as that is concerned but uh, what was more important is that these boys wanted to play a more progressive style that is what uh, encouraged me and mahesh because both of us uh, you know wanted our boys to be much more comfortable on the ball express themselves much more on the ball so we we knew that you know our boys were uh, a very fit fit bunch and uh, you know they were known as a counter attacking team but the intent of these boys to learn more progress more become a more possession possession based team team add a little more variety to their style of play accompanied to winning matches you know that mindset was already there in them and then it was up to us as a coaching staff just to make sure that we provide the right tools to these players so you know uh, like i said you know at at the end of the season you you may talk a lot but at the end of the season the table doesn't lie and the wins that we got the points that we uh, we got at the end of the season and the position that we finished was very satisfying because uh, we achieved what we wanted to achieve at that point of time so uh, you know it's about your mindset as a player and as a coach and i can guarantee you that these players were uh, not happy after the first season and the aim was to win and not finish last so if you have that kind of mindset if you have that kind of an attitude then you know you, you nothing can stop you from achieving your goal another question i think i'm being super critical and uh, that's me being a journalist here uh is that a lot of at least some there's some speculation that you know uh the fact that there is an indian arrows team is sort of ensuring other feeder clubs from not existing or like you're probably taking every what would have been money for other uh, feeder clubs do you think would you agree to that uh, that accusation um uh, you know like i said earlier you know uh, we aren't competing for players Uh, at least till uh, till I was associated, I can speak for that. You know, we weren't competing with players. We had a lot of players mm-hmm. who played, uh, you know, the AFC under 19 with us. But then for the I League season, they went back to their to their clubs. Mm-hmm. You know, and even for example, I I recently heard uh, now for example the previous I League season, uh, Hormi Palm and Vikas turned up for the Arrows, right? Mm-hmm. They were on loan from uh, Minerva Punjab or Punjab FC. at this season mm-hmm. i think punjab fc have decided to keep them with the club and not send them back to the arrows so it's okay. good for them because they're going to get a chance to play in the i league hopefully so mm-hmm. it's not about uh, competing with uh, with any club but uh, you know if we feel a player has potential because now at this point of time uh, venki venkatesh is the coach of the team so he is looking at it from a point of view of a senior national team the players who are who he feels are in a position to you know maybe in a few years time uh try try out for the senior national team so if he has that uh, if he sees that potential in a player uh the aff would like to offer that player a chance to play regularly rather than you know uh sit in a reserve team squad or sit in a first team squad on the bench and not get enough playing time that is the only aim of the indian arrows and in fact even if we see potential uh for example in the current under 16 boys that is under bibiano if we see potential in those players if they can step up and make it into the i league team why not you know the aim the aim is to give maximum game time i don't think there's any intention uh to compete with any club for a player who we feel is getting ample game time at their parent club irrespective of it being a big club or irrespective of it being a feeder club you know uh in the end in the end you're going to get 20 22 to 25 players or 30 players who have a chance of getting more game time than they were where they are right now that's the only aim of the indian arrows no i asked this question specifically because if you look at the sales from indian arrows uh the players have gone for 20 lakhs 30 lakhs that's a kind of sum that we are generally talking about that sort of renders i league clubs from signing these players so if a gokulam wants to sign a player from an indian arrows or a uh, another football chennai city wants to sign a player from indian arrows that becomes a little difficult because of the money we are dealing with and isl clubs having way more uh, financial 
uh, power to come and buy of these players and very likely that these players will go and sit in the bench so yeah. it's not really helping out in their career as well yeah in in that sense you know like i said you know it depends upon the decision of the player you know you you may you may go for the amount of money that you're going for to a particular isl club but if if the player and his agents nowadays if they feel that you know you're not getting a chance to play for this club maybe you negotiate a deal saying that okay i'll join your club but send me back on loan maybe to the aro so send me back on loan to some i league club i think i think that process is uh, uh, should start you know it's already happening with a few players who are hell bent on getting uh, game time but i don't think there's anything to do with the arrows and uh, feeder club i think that has to do with decision making because uh, if you, again you go back to the under 17 world cup team and you see the amount of players that are now playing uh, first team football and the amount of players who are with isl clubs and not getting game time it's not uh, the fault of the indian arrows is the fault of the players decision so and they have a chance now with every year to rectify that decision and to uh, you know make sure that their career doesn't stop so that is an important aspect and i think uh, those players require a lot of good people around them to you know educate them and make them understand that game time is important and i think that's universal and we've seen it here in the EPL where uh, uh, big clubs like man city chelsea uh, have not uh, played young players they've got a lot of talent so that talent has to then decide whether to go to another team like uh, sancho went to borussia dortmund and has made a yeah. name for himself but phil yeah. foden on the other hand is okay to play limited number of games with the promise of there being um you know more game time in the future so i totally agree with you it is down to the players to it's it's not the club or the academy it's it's down to the player and the, uh, his, the players, um, yeah. his um his uh, uh, management team and it's, uh, and uh, and bharat is even more crucial in india because you you talk about uh, chelsea and the premier league they have so many competitions happening below uh, the first team that even if you don't play in that first team you get a lot of chance to play you know in uh, maybe the the youth league yeah. or you know uh, local tournaments friendly uh, you have the premier league two happening you know, if you are in the uefa champions league you have the uefa youth league happening mm. so there are a lot of games happening at that level yeah, but in india true. you don't have you don't have that many opportunities to get competitive game time right now it's maybe the isl i league the second division i league that's the only that's the only or maybe the local league if you if you choose to go there as well so it's very important to take uh, good decisions you know uh, and uh, slowly but surely now a lot of youth team players are figuring that out looking at uh, their predecessors and uh, you know hopefully that will create a good environment and you know if, if it filters down the system as we are now getting a very good structure of what's happening in indian football so once that structure solidifies it will be really good not only for players but also for coaches management clubs to you know to find that uh, that uh, level of consistency consistency in giving players game time and and you you mentioned that quite a few of the batch that you've coached have gone on to have um, really good uh, careers in the ISL um i think that has to be a lot of encouragement for the younger players to take note of that that uh, there is progression but they need to manage themselves and what they sign up to um and which clubs they go to i think that's really important as well even in india with the limited number of clubs i think it's important which club you go to um you see the likes of orisha signing a lot of young players who probably will get a lot of game time uh, but then there's other clubs in the isl that you know they've still got marquee signings and big name foreign and foreign players so it, it's not all down to um the coaches or the managers it is down to the player as well definitely because you know uh, we just had a webinar with uh, with scott uh, uh, in which bibiano and alex and myself were there on the panel and we were talking about uh, coaching elite players you know or what uh, we were talking about the elite uh, players in, in india and i truly believe that you know uh, the players that we get into the youth system i'm not saying that we get 100% of the players but 
majority of the players that come into the system we believe have elite potential so there's a big difference in becoming an elite player and having potential to become an elite player, elite player and uh, i've mentioned before that you know uh, players need to train really hard players need to recover really well and players need to have good nutrition and if uh, a lot of players don't have even one of these three aspects you know uh, you miss out on a very cruel uh, uh, world of football you miss out on the chance to make it to the to the highest level so you know it's uh, a lot of players that we coached had elite potential but it is the players that have consistently worked on these three aspects uh, throughout the aff throughout their time in the aff and then uh, progressing into their club are the ones who are now uh, making it to the top you know and uh, the, a classic example would be uh, narendra and amarjit you know these boys were in the aff academy haven't they didn't even train with their respective isl club and they went straight on to the to the first team you know so it was because of their performances with the indian arrows in the in the i league it was because of their performance at the afc under 23 under under venkatesh and uh, derek that caught the eye of of the senior national team coach but even then they had to prove themselves in 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 the national team camp it was it wasn't a given that you are in the national team but they did it and kudos to them because now they are uh, you know in that process of becoming a uh, full international player amarjeet uh, both of them have already got caps for the country narendra has even scored for the national team so you, you, they are classic examples of uh, players who have elite potential but are now on their way to fulfilling that elite potential by working on these three aspects that we talked about um i was just going to ask uh, it's probably a very tough question but in terms of all the young players you've had who's been the one that you've um, or has there been a few that you thought from the start uh, these boys are going to make it and they have made it uh, without a shadow of a doubt i think the best player that uh, i've worked with is anirudh yeah. tapa because uh, you know he's uh, he has everything Uh, with him, you know, he has the quality that you require, the technical quality that you require in a football player. He has the tactical discipline. He 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 reads the game really well, uh, and more importantly, he was the captain for the for, for the AFF youth teams right throughout. So he's a leader on and off the pitch. Very few players, uh, you know, have the capability of knowing how to deal with the other players that they are working with. and he had that and above above all you know he's such a humble personality you won't you won't find an inch of uh, arrogance or an inch of uh, negativity in the way he goes about things you know uh, so that that's what i uh, that's what i like about uh, anirudh because there was he he had that complete package and uh, you could make out at that point of time that this boy you know you we say elite potential um, but we knew this boy is going to make it for sure uh, it is only a matter of him adapting to the situations that uh, he goes through later on in professional football like he went to chennai i think his time at met when he went to met for a for, for trials out there helped him a lot because uh, the one aspect where he was lacking was the physical side of things so when he went out to met i think he, he realized that he need to develop himself physically much more and uh, looking at him now you know i'm not surprised that uh, he's uh, uh, he's a mainstay or he's going to be a mainstay in the senior national team for a long time to come bharat if i may just ask yeah. ask another question to floyd and sorry did you probably like sum it up really fast what is the sort of uh, mental health structure in place because you're dealing with a lot of young players and a lot of uh, stardom at a very young age so we all knew about say anwar ali and in there all of these guys at like a very young age nong damba was called the indian hazard and all that is there any structure out there uh, to you know ensure that these kids are really well advised they can go there get their counseling can you just highlight what is there in this aspect 
uh, we aren't uh, we don't have uh, for example professionals maybe working with the mental health sort of thing but as coaches you know what we uh, and what i've learned from my experience is that uh, we 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 encourage the players to talk we encourage the players to open up it may not be with me it may be with mahesh it may not be with mahesh it may be with the physio if not the physio the manager if not the manager the captain of the team or another player but the more the more we have players talking voicing their opinion uh, you know sharing what's going on in their head you know has helped us overcome a lot of uh, uh, problems so to say uh, with various aspects you know uh you know and and it's up to us coaches as well uh you know to identify and to the identify the changes in body language of the players we can week out whether it is be in training sessions or during meals uh uh i had mentioned earlier we have a screening process in the morning before breakfast it's a good it's a good time for us you know to greet each and every player feel their pulse sometimes you know you feel a player who is very enthusiastic every day suddenly comes in low uh, then you find out maybe you know there is some problem at home or he's struggling with an injury or he's not happy about the performance of his previous match or training session so it's for us uh, at this level uh, we believe in getting the players to speak up we believe uh, in getting players to share what's going on in their head and with just that small aspect we've been able to sort out majority of the problems that we've had i don't think we've had any you know issues as far as the mental side of things are concerned where we haven't been able to solve uh, amongst ourselves as a group yeah. that's great that's great just really it goes back to my conversation with Dali Melchipa last week about where uh, sports psychology and how important it is especially here i'm assuming from what you're saying mm-hmm. it's not really a part of indian sports yet yeah yeah but you know uh, as of now a lot of young players um have a lot of people around them guiding them and giving them a lot of advice uh, earlier it wasn't the case so there was even more onus on us because uh, you know the, they are with us 24 by 7 maximum time of the year so the onus was on us but now there are a lot of uh, things happening off the field or off the aff campus with the players so it is important for us as coaches to be aware of what they are going through there as well you know at some point of time at some in some occasions that's really helpful because they have really good people giving them good advice but certain times you know we have uh, people who are you know uh, causing harm so to say or you know creating a lot of problems uh, for the players off the field a lot of uh, issues for them so we need to be aware of it i i believe i truly believe that you know if you are aware of the situation you are able to solve it someone or the other in the staff will be able to solve it the problem is when you are not aware of it and that usually happens if the player or if the coach doesn't encourage the players to share the, what's going on in their head so uh, like like i like i mentioned you know uh, anirudh was the captain for our team he knew exactly how to speak to other players in what tone to speak to them and he was very close to the staff as well if there was any issue that he felt he could solve on his own he did it if there were any issues that he felt the staff needs to get involved we got involved you know small small things you know like uh, for example in the camp you forget a player's birthday it you know sometimes affects him even more than what you think you know so so uh, so the very next day we celebrated it a small issues like that it's a small issue so you know it's very important for us to speak out and i i feel a lot of problems can be solved by just talking and sharing what's going on in it it's not only young players i remember the man city player who got upset when his uh, birthday was forgotten so it, it happens at yeah. the highest level as well um what would your advice be to a young 6 7 year old young boy or young girl who wants to go into you know a lot of playing football in the backyard and uh what would your advice be to them because there's not academies everywhere and you don't know how good the academies are nearer to you um but what is is there a route way that you think this is what you should be aiming to do to progress and have a career in football 
you know it's it's too young at that point of time to uh, to to say that you know you need to do this to ensure that you to have a career in football and uh, you know this goes back to my time with kentra football academy in in mumbai and we encourage the parents you know to you know just let their kids be let them be you know let them express themselves the way they want to we we in fact uh, encourage the parents to let the let their kids experience more activities other than just football you know uh, or activities that would you know help them uh, become better footballers in the sense uh, for example say say dancing could improve your footwork you know uh, swimming could uh, in, uh, enhance your flexibility so activities that would enhance their uh, cognitive skills so to say uh, you know play play a sport like basketball you know or badminton where it involves your hand eye coordination or your body coordination so you know do not restrict the players or do not restrict your kids to just one particular activity let them experience uh, a whole range of activities and then you will see that development happening uh, in them gradually you know that's my advice to them and even even if with the aff academy uh, like uh, the boys that we had uh, we had one day one uh, in 10 days we had a session where we went to the ground and we played everything else except football mm-hmm. so we had we had badminton we had volleyball we had tennis uh, so we had all these activities even cricket so we had all these activities on the ground where we rotated every 15 20 minutes so every player got a chance to play a different sport uh, for about 15 20 minutes during that particular training session so so and then we had a lot of players who you know like to play the guitar you know like to sing uh, we had players who were on their way to becoming uh, good national level boxers so they used to practice that off the field so you know any activity that helps you uh, you know keep yourself busy keep yourself active keep yourself mobile we shouldn't restrict the player especially a kid at the age of 6 7 8 years old to one particular activity you know? that's really so that's reassuring to hear to because um, if you were to go to any saturday or sunday league young uh, kids league say you should see the parents you think it was a game that was so important with the shouting and what have you the pressure they put on the kids here because uh, football starts here as you know uh, at a very young age and they're in leagues from a very young age so the pressure i'm glad uh your advice is uh what it is in terms of giving them variety and build up their other skills as well it's not all about football you know because at that age it's more important dealing with the parents than dealing with the players yeah. you know and uh, we've had that similar situation at kent uh, football club as well you know where we encourage the parents you know enjoy your kids play encourage him but don't shout out instructions okay. kind of a vibe with the parents and you you can't help uh but you will always you always going to have parents who are overly eager but i'd like to add you know because uh you need that level of competitiveness encourage that level of competitiveness in the right sense because that is going to that is going to help your kid develop so be it any activity that he is doing you know there should be a competitive edge to it you know so it, it you know, we have a lot of baby leagues happening right now uh you know it should be competitive it should be for that moment of time you should feel that you are competing with someone else and uh, only then you will realize the potential that you have or the skill that you have how much needs to be enhanced or how much needs to be developed but there should be a very good environment in place to help the players work in and i've said in previous talks that i've had with others as well you know uh, the the one small difference that i find at at a younger age uh, with with indian football kids and kids abroad maybe in europe or maybe even in the us is that abroad they create the environment for the players to express themselves and to bring out the the full potential while in india we kind of try to bring the player into the environment that we want and restrict his growth by by telling him what to do rather than creating that environment in which he does whatever we want to do unknowingly you know by himself that's a, that's a small difference that i think 
uh, I find between the development here, not be it football or any other sport, and the development you know abroad. Um, before I move on uh, to yourself and uh, your plans in the immediate future, um, I remember we had a couple of we were messaging when um, India played uh, Bangladesh and Kolkata, an incredible atmosphere yeah. in the yeah. stadium. And um, I think you told me to be patient. Uh, we will get there as a team in terms of where we are in world standards or Asian standards. Yeah. Um, how patient do you want me to be? Every you know, life <laughs> at the moment is that you want everything. You know how it is. You want the next next day delivery, or you want uh, immediacy. Um, and you saw the figures, um, the ISL figures. I think if, if I read rightly, and there was a huge increase in viewership. So interest is growing. But you would agree that interest will only keep growing if we have success. Um, so what would your message be in terms of you know being patient and? we will get there but it'll take time it's it's you know it's the a national team job is always the most difficult because you don't have that continuous time with your players you know out there and we were very fortunate in the build up to that bangladesh match to to witness the training session the day before the match and to interact with igor and his staff uh, so you know it's important to feel the pulse of the coach, what he wants to do and what he aims at doing. And from the first day that he took the job till now, for me personally, I can see uh, a change in style, a change in the way the team is playing. And, the, and more importantly, the players are buying into the philosophy of the coach. That is more important. Uh, you know, uh, as far as being satisfied is concerned, I think, you know, at the end of, by the end of this World Cup campaign, I think that would be a time where you would see him firmly settle down with his philosophy and the players that he wants to. So I think, you know, moving into uh, into the next World Cup campaign or the, or the campaign post the World Cup qualification would be where we can start seeing uh, results, so to say. You know, that is what I feel. Because, you know, at one point of time, we were celebrating the Qatar result. And the next day, we were disappointed about the Bangladesh result. And they were two totally different matches. Yeah. You know, two totally different games. So, uh, if you see it from a fan point of view, obviously, you're going to be very disappointed. But uh, if you see it from a coach's point of view, uh, you can see that, you know, uh, in due time, you can expect better results to come. And I'm hopeful. You know, I'm not saying that the results won't come or will come, but I'm hopeful seeing the development uh, or seeing the way in which uh, Igor is progressing with his uh, with each and every camp or with each and every tournament that he's playing. So uh, I'm I'm in your position, you know. I'm just eagerly waiting, and as a coach, I'm even more interested. Uh, I like, uh, if, if possible, I would like to attend each and every camp to see what's happening, and uh, you know. I'm always supportive of the person who's there in charge. If you've given him the responsibility, give him the time. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, it's pointless after every game, you know, trying to uh, distract the players or the coach as far as results are concerned. So I've, I've kept myself away from that and I'm just enjoying the way he's working with the current lot of players. And hopefully post this World Cup campaign, we will start to see uh, a more realistic uh, uh, projection of how he wants to play and the players that he now believes the player that he now believes is going to take us to the to the next level yeah well two things from that really i know you're a very patient person because you waited 30 years for a title uh, for a club <laughs> uh, but the other thing is uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute but the other thing is you've given me hope for the uh, next uh, asian cup in i think it's china 2022 so we should see um, some progress by then. So that's not too long to wait. So that's fair enough. That's a good yeah, message. Yeah, that's not too long. Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, as a manager, you develop a lot of players and they work under you. How do you develop yourself as a manager? Um, how do you keep progressing? Competition. There's nothing that helps you judge yourself uh, better than a competition. Right throughout my time at King with the AFS and now wherever I end up, uh, you know, I've always 
wanted to be in an environment which is competitive uh, so that gives me a good idea of uh, how much i need to improve or where i stand at this point of time uh, in in my coaching career so even at kankre uh, the teams that i coached uh, you know right throughout the system we were always in competition be it the first team the under 19s and the 17s and even the youth teams and we used to go abroad for two tournaments every year which gave us an idea of where we stand uh, even at the aiff every game is a competition so you, you can't afford to lose even a single game uh, with the aiff uh, youth teams and uh, you know uh, at one point of time in the aiff setup i felt you know now i want to progress further uh, into the professional uh, side of things and fortunately for me the indian arrows was uh, rejuvenated so that gave me a very good insight into the i league two years into the i league uh, you know traveling uh, playing matches week in week out uh, that that excited me you know the, like nevin said you know the, there's a pressure behind that i enjoy that pressure i uh, and, and and i thrive on that pressure so you know that kind of a pressure if you go say motivates me to do even better motivates me to do to progress myself even more learn more new things you know try a lot of new things because i'm a young coach so mm. i'm going to do things that maybe an experienced coach may not do because uh, i'm at this point of time where i like to express myself so so now wherever i want to go next i want to ma- be make sure i'm in an environment where i'm tested i'm i'm also going to make sure that i'm in an environment where i'm going to learn you know uh, something new one thing that i want to do is you know i want to now start working more with technology uh, we didn't have uh, the the privilege to do that uh, with the aff youth teams so hopefully they might get it now but that's what i want to do you know i want i want to uh, use technology or implement technology into my coaching uh, philosophy and see how that goes from there because uh, the way we are progressing right now uh, the world is far, far far ahead of us but uh, technology is a big part uh, in a, in in football right now and we need to use it in the right sense so i think that would be the next progression for me and obviously you know i'm looking forward to doing my pro license as soon as possible uh, because uh, it's been a while since i've done my a license so that is going to be the next challenge for me as well brilliant um before i move on to um the end and i've got to talk about uh, the coach's favorite team have you got any final questions uh, for coach uh, nevin <laughs> you know maybe a, a quick word on the afc under 16 and uh, uh, the, the group that we've been placed uh, we're going to be playing against australia south korea I personally find it exciting, and between Bharat and I, I've got this very freaky record of predicting uh, the India results right. So I've been telling my friends that I have a sneaky feeling that India is going to do well because the odds are completely against us. That means our kids can really go there, play without fear, and also a great opportunity because I'm assuming a lot of scouts, international scouts, will be watching, especially the South Korean and the Australian teams. So. along with that they'll probably see our kids as well and hopefully get picked by an international side what do you think about the upcoming event it's uh, you know the the draw is, is a very very interesting draw why because two of the opponents in the draw are familiar because we played uzbekistan already and we lost to south korea in the last in the last uh, afc under 16 edition so the boys will know uzbekistan in and out and i'm sure they're going to do a lot of analysis uh, to make sure that they are up to date with what uzbekistan has been doing from then till the tournament i'm sure the coaching staff vibiano and his staff are well aware of what they experienced in south korea last year against south korea last year uh, they wouldn't have forgotten that for sure and they will prepare these boys and vibiano is very confident that these boys will be able to perform in a much better way than what the previous batch did so that's very encouraging that leaves us with australia and i think uh, you know uh, as a coach you know i i uh, uh, as opposed to playing against uh, 
uh, you know, a Japan or an Iran or an Iraq, you know, I think Australia uh, would be a game where we, we feel we are always in it, I think. You know, the way these boys are playing against uh, a team like Australia, if you look at the results in, their, in, in, in the previous phase where they beat Vietnam 2-1, so I think looking at that result, we could say, like you said, you know, we will be in it. I don't think that uh, our team will be overawed by any of these teams in in, in the group. And uh, I'm, I more importantly, I have faith in uh, Bibiano as a coach and his coaching staff that you know they are going to keep these boys grounded. Uh, they are going to keep these boys motivated. And what I believe that is going to help them in this competition is. The experience that the, the staff had in the previous competition, I think that is going to be an added motivation against against uh, in this in this edition and have and the boys are already having played Uzbekistan. It's going to be an added bonus because now the boys also have a feel of what uh, team they're going to come up against. So it's I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure all the games are going to be very close, and it's going to be down to. You know the the nitty gritty, the the small mm-hmm. moments in the game that is going to matter, and uh, uh, fingers crossed. I I hope uh, they do well, yeah, and they come out of the group. Absolutely, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it as well. And um, we'll talk. And I think it's in November, isn't it? So um, we've got time yeah. to prepare ourselves for that. Um, but I have to end uh, this uh, fantastic talk with yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. How are you planning to celebrate the title win? On a Zoom webinar. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, um, I'm really, uh, you know, I, uh, looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to a long time. We've had a lot of banter with a lot of uh, uh, friends of mine uh, on WhatsApp groups, you know, taunting us, saying that, you know, it's never going to happen. And uh, there's always going to be a star in front of your title. And then, you know, uh, Klopp's response, I think yesterday or today, was a classic example of why I believe that you know he is the best person for the football club. You know, he said that you know even if there's a star next to our title, I believe that Liverpool have won this title in the most difficult circumstances ever in the history of football. So you know that kind of uh, enthusiasm that he brings to the football club uh, has you know increased my love for the football club and has got me even closer. To Liverpool Football Club than ever, you know this kind of situation and the man that leads us. So mm. I hope this title is not the first of many. I hope this is of the I first. I was going to say, and, <laughs> no, yeah. no, I hope this is the first of many. And uh, you know, with with Klopp there, it's uh, it's. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic that there's more to come. Yeah, he's on the rise. Why? Well, Pep is probably in his final year. There's already talk of whether he's going to extend his contract, so that'll be interesting. But no, um, I've got mixed fe- feelings about Liverpool winning the title, but uh, I suppose uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys have suffered enough for 30 years in the shadows of uh, the likes of City and United and Arsenal. So you've won a couple of uh, Champions Leagues, uh, but that doesn't seem too much at the moment. It's the Premier League is the one that all, all the Liverpool fans want. Yeah. Um, it's just a pity that it is in this current situation because I've um, people prior to the lockdown were already planning how they're going to spend that weekend in Liverpool. Um, because there's, uh, I know quite a few friends uh, like yourself who support Liverpool and are planning to go up there for the parade. And so that's a pity. Uh, but I'm sure once everything's sort of back to normal, they will have a big party. Quite deservedly, you've been the best team by a long, shot, long way. Uh, no matter what anybody says, uh, the, like you said, the table doesn't lie. And um, I'm looking forward to how the celebration will be. I've seen the Bayern celebration, so I'm assuming it'll be the similar one. But uh, um, I'm looking forward to the pictures you'll send wearing your Liverpool shirt with the one star with an asterisk next to it. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. But today, Coach, um, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, you're one of the early persons to come on our podcast and supported us. You came on our 50th show as well. And today wow. is our 99th show. I can't thank you enough for <laughs> the podcast. It's been fantastic following you, speaking to you. Um, I'm sure it's the same for Nevin. So I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And wish you all the best for your media plans. And hopefully we'll have you back on the show again soon. But thank you for today. 
thank you thank you so much uh, bharat and uh, i must say it's it's a pleasure talking to you especially someone who's come through i'm i'm speaking to who's actually gone through uh uh this pandemic first hand and you've come out of it uh like a champion you know yeah, if, uh, i think if if uh, liverpool get a star on their badge i think you should have a star on your t-shirt as well uh, <laughs> coming through this with five flying colors you know so yeah. uh, more power to you and hopefully uh, you can inspire uh, the people around you you know to fight against this uh, this virus the way you did and come out of it with flying colors thank you for your very kind words thank you and take care